The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, folks. Appreciate your growling and prowling with us. We have the Dow Industrials down uh, 42 not right now. You get Nasdaq down. Is that Dow down about 82. I think you were looking at the 80s. NASDAQ, yeah. What am I doing? Oh, I see. Yeah. You know, I, I changed those I last night. I thought you did. You know, you that's threw what, me for a loop, man. We got the did. dollar over I, here. I, I changed Just changing the makeup, folks. I, changed, I didn't get the memo. I did the I, same thing. I did. I changed them last okay. night. Okay. So, uh, Dow right down, down uh, 70. NASDAQ is off uh, 39. S&Ps are off... Uh, four, uh, actually, oh, I, I like how you put it. Why don't you go S&P, NASDAQ, Dow? Yeah, that's probably what you were thinking. Right down the line. S&P, negative 15. NASDAQ, negative 44. Dow, negative 87. Yeah. Perfect. And the composite it down 41 you gotta yeah, love it yeah gold contract gold contract up seven dollars and 40 cents trading at 1319 we get silver up 13 cents 15 dollars 54 cents uh you get the oil market off uh, 30 cents 58 dollars 71 cents notes and bonds folks bottom line we are going topside uh, well they broke topside had the volume behind the move they're both abc structures on the way up you get the 10 year up seven ticks 124.08 30 year up 10 148.27 now it's going to be really interesting is this is that ABC structures on the way up or on the way down is that the identification in them is A to B is a straight line move. B to C is a consolidation, drives everyone crazy. C to D is a straight line move. When I say straight line move, you know, it, it's, it's not scientific, but the bottom line is that it's straight, and it looks like we're going to go straight to 2.1%. Uh, we're two point six. Well, actually, it might be below two, yeah, two point six which one are you right now. About? Just the ten. Ten. Okay. Yeah, we're two point four right yeah. now. Two point four two five. We hit another low, twelve month low out here. Right. Uh, King dollar. King dollar is uh, struggling. Uh, that is down one thirty one. And what you can expect with King dollar, I expect we're gonna have a nice volatile week out here. You know, they got the extension in Brexit. Yes, two weeks lifetime. Two weeks. <laughs> uh, what you had happen over the weekend. Uh, you know, a few of the banks had already stopped moving people out of London. J.P. Morgan, okay. bottom line, they gave everyone, they gave 300 of their traders notice. Okay. They had given them notice before this, okay, okay, that you may have to move. They gave them the contingency, Saturday night, we're going. Okay. 300, okay? Yep. So they have to take a job somewhere else. So they're not waiting for two weeks. Yep. I guess they probably waited to the very end. They probably have the offices already set up. Sure. And they get to go over there, and that's just going to be about cross-border yeah. Dealing. Yes, right. right. That's what it comes down you to. don't want to have your operations cordoned off in an area that has no trade deals with the rest of the world, it, essentially. It, so, yeah, yeah exactly. you can understand why. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. We do go over and take a look at that S&P when you're doing that uh, update. Bottom line, folks, you came down hard on Friday. All the indices, all the ETF structures. Bottom line is that uh, this baby uh, wants lower price. And, uh, this morning, just as we started off, that's a classic, man. Uh, what I mean by a classic is that uh, you get a nice pop in the morning, yep. and then someone's on the other side of that just saying, thank you, God, and they throw as much in there as that they can get. And yeah. that's exactly what we got in the S&Ps. Yeah, the first five, ten minutes was up, and then yeah. from there, the escalation to the downside begins. Right, yeah. and what, ha what happens here with this S&P right now, you know, the low, the low of last night that was uh, established out here, like almost just right after the future just opened, uh, 7 o'clock. Uh, I think seven? that's about 3 in the morning. That's uh, yeah, 3 you, in the morning, yeah. yeah I think you, you were looking at this yeah. one, too, probably, right, when the futures open about yeah. 8 o'clock or so, uh, but that's, yeah. So right. this low is going to be important, folks, and it's only 3 points below where we are right now. You blow yeah. out that low, and you'll really get some acceleration yeah. to the downside. 27, 90, 25. Yeah. You know, we, we got, uh, you know, you're going to see if we take a look at the volume here. The, you got the expansion on the way down. NYSE did over a billion. Yeah, 1.1 billion on the NYSE. Uh, you go into the composite, and the composite did uh, 2.4. Yeah. Uh, Apple, uh, today's Apple's big day. Apple's nah. going to save the world and save, save the streaming world, evidently. <laughs> you know, you read the stories about it, it's like, uh, for me, it's hard to even comprehend. It's like that the streaming is going to be so dramatic. And the reason I'm saying that is that they've had Apple TV forever, and it has never got any traction. Sure. You know? I so. think it's a different deal, though, Italian. Apple TV is just patching you into other providers, basically. 
versus they might start doing their own type of content and, and more deals of that. I mean, as in Apple TV is kind of like a Roku um, to bring you into that world versus oh, yeah, listen, this is going to be... The Apple has the devices. Yeah. You know, that's what, that's what people oh, no. are getting excited well, about. I agree with you're you saying, know? man. I mean, getting into the, the original content business, when you start competing with Netflix spending $10 billion, right. um, you know, Amazon spending... God knows how much money in the future oh, yeah. that no, they want to. It, um, it's a battle. Yeah. The, the battle's out there. Let's go take a look at some of the, uh, well, actually, if we go over to Asia, you're going to see last night, uh, folks, uh, Asia got smoked last night. Uh, you had it down pretty hard, 2% yeah. uh, to 3%. Yeah. Uh, you take a look at the Nikkei out here, and this is going to be interesting. So if you're in the metals market, what we have going for us is that you have the yen getting stronger, which is good. Um, it's going to all be about, you can see this yen, just, it's amazing, man. When, this is the Nikkei, though, right? You said. Oh, okay. Yeah. So the Nikkei was down 650. Yep. Now watch. If I put the, oh, yep. JPY. The, the Nikkei takes conniptions when the sure. yen goes south. And so the, the yen, yeah. you know, I'm, yep. you know we're, we're, Big at, moves. we're at 109.96. Now, that sets up, you know, a 108. You know, we'll see whether there's a, was just that big spike down 104, but it sets up a 108. Uh, what we don't have going for us just yet in the gold market is the pound or the euro. You know, they're both uh, trying to get up there, but I expect that's going to be all about news. It's not only going to be about, are they going to do it? another vote going on today, I believe. Yeah. Um, can't keep track of them all. No, I know. And they, uh, over the weekend, all they kept saying is it's going to be a revolt. There's a, there's a lot of stuff happening over there. <laughs> I mean, it's... They got yeah. two weeks. I mean, there should be news every day. If they're going to get some type of a deal, there's, there's got to be action now. Yeah. yeah. When, when I saw, let's see, watch this. When I saw this last night, though, I said, you know what? Uh, there you go, top one. Right yeah. There. That this is, gonna, this is serious right now. Uh, JP Morgan's pushing 300 London based investment bankers, staff to s sign fresh contracts, firm to leave the UK in the event of no Brexit deal. Okay, so that's a little deal. That's a little different than what we had said, that they're not canning them or anything. This is the. Oh, they're not canning them, no. They're, okay, they're, the beginning of that let off that they were definitely being forced to move or, or something. That, oh, that was the, my impression you gave well, me from the beginning. That's what it says. The, the employees who are working. It's only if there's no deal. That's yeah, you know, I understand that. Okay. I understand That's that. a big if. There's an if. They're, yeah. they're not, so they're just making them sign that if there's no deal, you know, right. you're going to have to move. Right. right. Uh, they, they, they opened an office in Dublin to house yep. the expanded uh, post-Brexit Irish force, but it, it's not saying where they're going to have to go. But uh, Can I slide <laughs> up to the top? Yeah. No, I mean, not, not a good position to be in if you're one of these workers, no matter what, right? Because... Um, what if you get a family, you get a life, you can't oh, do yeah. it. So they might right. not be willing to sign that. And then, man, talk about a gamble in terms of saying, boy, do I sign this, and I really don't want to move, and I bank on the fact that they don't move, but i got to keep my job, and maybe it's time to move the family if they do. I mean, that's, that's what those people are going to be dealing with oh, in yeah. those positions, yeah. Uh, let me tell you something. I'd, I'd sign the deal if I was working for them. The reason I'd sign the deal is that because if it really happens, there's not going to be banking jobs in, in the UK. I agree. You There's know? a lot to take in. You got kids yeah. in the school, man. You can take them out, or I'm just that's that's where oh, that yeah. deal comes no, no, in I, too. I, so I, I can't get that. Just say it's all about money. I'd sign it no matter what. Yeah. You have the Dow Industrials right now uh, down a buck twenty-five. We get the Nasdaq off uh, sixty-two. S and P's are off twenty. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, 
the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the Taz Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at Taz has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the Taz Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the Taz Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the Taz Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Taz Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Folks, uh, Dow Industrials down 91, NASDAQ is off 50, S&Ps are off uh, 13. And this is quite a number. Um, yeah. Look at this number right here. Okay. So, 10 trillion pool of negative debt is a late cycle reckoning. That's the headlines. Okay? Yeah. It's quite a number. So, you got the Bloomberg Index tracking negative yield debt has reached the highest level since September of 17, not that long ago, as 10-year boons trade in negative territory. And that's probably a big portion of it, right, in terms of the amount of money yeah. that's in a, the 10-year boon. And the U.S. yield curve flashes recession warnings. So global supply of bonds yielding below zero it's hits amazing. trend trillion. And there's kind of the analysis. And you got all the way down to under six trillion. And then, man, it's been quite a run since September. Um, that's an amazing amount of money that, sure is. that people have to pay for someone else to hold their money. Right, I agree. Ten trillion. Yeah. So with central banks in dovish mode, money managers face increasing pressure to reprise the yield chasing mentality synonymous with quantitative easing. Um, and let's see, fight for yields. So fund flows underscore the lust for yield in low rate, low Inflation climate. Investors in the week through March 20th parked 6.6 .6 billion into investment grade funds, 3.2 billion in high yield bond funds, and 1.2 billion in emerging market debt. The extraordinary abrupt end to central bank hiking plus Fed paranoia, um, uber bullish credit, and uber bearish volatility. Yeah. So while negative yields on paper suggest that investors lose money just by holding, bond buyers could also be looking at price gains if growth stalls and inflation stays low. Right. I mean, that's, you know, if the market really pulls back or something. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, right. right. The price will go and up. That's why you right. got bonds versus, right. you know, equities and that 60-40 split or whatever in terms of um, we've never seen monetary easing so long, so broad, so big. Um, head of dynamic allocation strategies. Chicago-based fund manager. What happens after every significant period of accommodation is a reckoning. This time, the bubble is low-rated credit and illiquid private assets. You know, it's amazing, man. You know, folks, uh, our man Basil Chapman has a great show on every day at noon. And I remember the first time that he talked about, you know, Japan's been in this environment for a long time. Yes. But I swear, I think it's like over 10 years ago, Basil brought up the aspect that, hey, we just might get into that area. And yeah. 
I believe you call it the ja Japanization of our bonds, yeah. right? Yeah. And yeah. it looks like it's happened. Oh, for sure, right? I mean, you know, it, it's it, it, this one here, even though I was really bullish bonds, that it actually happened is, is like, pretty amazing, man. Yeah. I mean, it really is. And they're still ticking up. Not to enjoy it, but it's, I mean, it, we're it now is. up nine ticks. They're saying, you know, 10-year new highs as we're talking. Yeah. Um, man, here, if we go... The party like, ain't stopping just yet, man. No, it's not, <laughs> man. And, and when you look at this, folks, this is a decisive break. Now, this is going to be the yield chart that we're looking at. Yep. And I put this back. You're going to see let's, the next stair case down is... Sure. 2.1 to 2 percent. Yeah. I mean, this is a decisive break. Now, you're looking at a weekly, so you can see the amount of cars that was built up. And when you broke last week, man, we broke with conviction. That's a yeah. conviction break. And that correlates to the last time we were at that 10 trillion mark on that chart, September of is 17. It? Yeah, okay. which it makes sense, right? Low, yeah. low rates, that's where you get into that negative deal. Because if the U.S. at 2.1, right, yeah. maybe that's going to bring the German Bund or something even lower, yes. et cetera. Um, so sitting at 2.4, and we were at a high, I believe, 3.259. Yeah, 3.259. Quite a number. So over seven tenths below. Pretty amazing. Yeah. If we go back to the generic tenure, looking at the other way, you're going to see that this break is pretty. In yeah, look at that break. Yeah. Wow. That's a sweet break. <laughs> that is a. That's, yep. a, that's an intense break topside. And what is the price on that September 17, right okay. above 128? Yeah, 128.03. Yeah. 128.03. Yep. And you can see, when you look at this chart, folks, okay, once you break something like this, because we went down so fast, sure. there's not much in the middle. You know, the first time stopping is somewhere about 125, 124.27, sure. you know? Yep. And you're, you're moving right along. And what, of course, is what's also happened here is that the amount of folks that our shot bonds. Yeah, I think we can bring this up because what did happen, this is pretty intense if I can find this. The, um, let's see, this would be Friday's news because the okay. what ends up happening is that. Good the, luck getting through the weekend's news I, on this. No, totally. <laughs> what ends up happening is that. The, I don't think we're, we're only at like five in the morning. Okay, so the, the amount of shot interest comes out every Friday. Okay. And what has happened, oh. you know, from this, what has happened is that. The amount of shot interest in these bonds okay. right before last week yep. went up astronomically. Okay. So the amount of folks that actually, there it is, nice. leverage fund shot. Um, okay, so it has a shot cover may have been a meaningful impetus behind the strength in the post-FedEx meeting rally, but watch this. Let's see. Leverage funds picked a bad time to add to a large shot position in light of the strong rally last week. The funds added to all the shot treasury future positions, with the exception of the 10-year contracts, which are unchanged. Net shot positioning swelled by over 120,000 per basis point in of, of TY contract in equivalents. That, okay. Yeah, so that's 10 years. Yes, TY. yes. Levered funds built most into the five-year and classic 30-year bonds. The ultra-long contract means the primary shot position. Um, Speculators covered some of the shot futures positions in the week ended March 19th. They reduced positions in the TY contracts the most. Uh, in the past two weeks, shot position in TY futures has been cut by 123,000 per basis point. Positions up to long were decreased over the same amount. The majority shot positions are expressed to ultra long contracts. The deal has increased the aggregate cash. Reducing cash, let's see, in the weekend in March 13th. See, this is a week old, too. That's how this works. But okay. it, when, they, when, they, when they say what happened Friday, it's the prior week. What's interesting, they do talk about the 19th here for that one, but then they're, they're reverting to the 13th here. Yeah. So bottom line is that uh, <laughs> you don't want to be on the wrong side of this uh, steamroller, folks, because yeah. it's, it's pretty powerful. And uh, you can see why. You know, you can, if we, if, now if we go overseas and just look at some of these rates, oh, there it is. That Germany, yeah, Germany's in the negative again. There you go. Right. Yep. You know, Germany, it just started in the negative again. This is on the 10 year. Yeah. Um, Let's see where the year. So in the three months, it was at about almost three tenths of percent. That's okay. just in the last 90 days. I'm just curious where it goes when they're, um, so it was up to about 6, 0.64. Um, just in the last 12 months, and we're sitting uh, basically at lows. Let's see the. Is this going to give us a chart of the yield? Yeah. Uh, no, okay, that's, that's that's tick by tick. Let's if, put if, it on if, uh, like a 60-minute, even six-month. All right, now we can go. 
Yeah, look at that. I mean, talk about just straight down, right? The last six months. Right. No, that's even, that's from January. So that's from beginning of the year, basically. So it's from a quarter of percent. Yes, down to yeah. negative. And there's your zero right there. So that's quite a movement. It is. And that, and that, like I was saying, that has to do, I think, with the number of those 10 year, um, 10 trillion worth yes. of funds in negative. Because right. the second that ticks negative, the amount of money in that 10 year boon is probably staggering. Yeah. It's a brave new world. The they say, I'm going to give you all this money, and I'm going to pay you to hold it. I know. Yeah. I know. And just make sure you give it back to me, minus whatever you're going to charge me to hold I it. I know, man. It's crazy. <laughs> Dow Industrials right now are down uh, 69. You get the Nasdaq off 40. No, Nasdaq's down 47. The S&Ps are off 15. Come right back. Folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFN and you'll find market insights under trading newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. <laughs> Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow Industrials right now down 70. You get the Nasdaq uh, off uh, 44. S&Ps are down 13. If we go over inside the Dow Industrials, taking a look at the uh, strength versus the weakness out here. Point. Yeah, United Health I saw as well. I'm not sure what's going on with them, but yeah. I saw they were lagging today. Yeah, they're putting in uh, 30 negative points into the Dow. You got Apple putting 15, Big Mac's putting 
13, Goldman, 4. Look who's on the top of the uppers. On the uppers, you got <laughs> Boeing putting 13 positive, but I'll tell you, Boeing's in trouble, folks. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, they're up two points in this $364 stock. They might as well just be flat. So right, they're lucky. and, yeah. you know, anything under this 365, 56 is a problem. Yeah. And uh, they had quite an article in the uh, New York Times this weekend. Okay, I wasn't um, able to check it out. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Uh, it has to do with how the... Uh, 737 Max got started, okay, and uh, why it got started instead of making a new plane, and what it had to do with, as the article was going on, it had to do with the uh, the CEO of American Airlines. America is one of their biggest clients and has been for 10 years. Okay, uh, he was talking to the CEO of Boeing and saying, "Hey, man, this Airbus 320 is real. Okay, and we might be ordering them." And yeah, Boeing just like what that. You know, they, they weren't paying attention. Sure, right. Um, and uh, it made a difference. Yeah. And so they scrambled to get it going. And what the article is about, folks, is the aspect that it would take them 10 years to make a brand new plane. It takes them six to take the 737, re retrofit it. I, maybe I had read you know, some of that article because yeah. I did see where they were talking about if they keep the same body of the plane, yes. they don't have to go the full regulatory process of right. getting everything approved where they right. keep kind of a framework, right, right? And, then, right. and then they get right. the additions. Right. Um, so they, they, went, they went on more extensively in this article. What they did, what they, did they interviewed uh, their engineers, and their engineers were saying that uh, the ramp up was so quick that normally, let's say that you're an engineer, I'm an engineer, and we're putting drawings in, and we want drawings every day. Well, normally we'd put, let's say, per week, five, let's say 10 sets. Sure. They wanted 20 sets. Yeah, just everything, right? And what ended up happening is that the, um, inside the airline business, of course, folks, what ends up happening is that every little tool that you even put wires in is not that it's a separate tool, but there's certain tools to put them together. Yes. Bottom line, is that on the first sets of prints, that was not in there at all. Okay, yeah. Um, so it's, it's... No, I had seen... It, it is might, what it is. It might know? be in that same article I read yeah. somewhere talking about how one of the things that they really pushed in selling it was saying that, listen, this is so similar to the last plane in terms of piloting that you, you're going to even be able to use an iPad app to train the pilots. As in, it's so similar that if you're already, you know... Um, certified to be a pilot for the old 737. No, I'm so glad you brought it's this gonna up. It's going to be an iPad app that's just going to walk you through those smaller details that's going to be different, that, right? Because that was the biggest part of this article I'm talking that's what, about. So we and what it was yeah. is that not, they wanted it that pilots would not have to go in the simulator. Right. Because the simulator right. is, is a big deal. And now, you can the, see that that the amazing wasn't part. the case. So check out this, folks. This is the amazing part, which I'm sure plenty of folks knew. The amazing part is that they did not even... this this new part that they put in, right? Yeah. They felt they didn't have to tell the pilots. It wasn't they, updating the documentation, right? At all. It, right? Zero. Oh, I know. I know. Zero. Yeah, it's staggering. It is. Zero. Yep. That, that, that computer is flight and, and, and they, didn't, they didn't do it and the FAA went along with it. Yeah. That's pretty intense. Man. It sure is. So I mean, tech, hopefully tech, we get some changes there. Yeah. Oh, there's going to be changes, man. Yeah. There's going to be changes uh, and technically this is the next breakdown on this baby. Um, you know. And I think, is that the one that talked about as well that you have the regulators going into lobbying positions left and right, I believe. They didn't there's have, so many coming out, no, I can't keep is, track. Um, this one was more of an uh, interview with engineers that were sure. on the proposal, okay. how it came to be, yeah. you know, and unfortunately, you know, they're all sad too. They, even when they were, they were interviewing them and even the folks that are saying, okay, we we're coming up too much, they still felt they had a safe plane. Yeah. I mean, they, 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 there isn't this deal that the engineer felt like, no. Of course. Uh, they didn't think they were going to put a plane, hopefully, no, that no. was going to follow the right. sky. But the right. problem is, the reason why you have regulators in this type of an industry, there's conflicts of interest. Right. right? And that's the problem. Right. That you can't let people who are being pushed for job security by profits, deadlines, right. et cetera, because they might think they're making the right decision, but that's the whole point of a conflict of interest is you are incapable of making the correct decision. Right. That's why Supreme Court justices, to put this in, right. have to recuse themselves sometimes. Right. Because even in their best judgment, not saying yep. they would do it purposely, right. you cannot eliminate that in your own mind. Right. Just, that's like the definition of it. So to say, well, they were doing the right thing, uh, you know, inevitably, if you're in that business of profit, right. it's going to creep into decision right. making. Yeah. Yeah, there's no doubt. Yeah, man. it's just yeah. There's, there's no doubt. It's human nature. It's not bad. You know, it's human nature. Conflicts of interest. Be very wary of them because they just they they bias everybody, and right. there's nothing you can do about it.
Gold. Uh, gold's up 910 right now, folks. And what you're going to have here, it's going to be pretty cool. You know, we're going to launch this uh, 1316. You're at 1321. It took a while to get through that line. Uh, that's, and that's a, that's a good supply line. And the equity, so if you look at the XAU, the HUI, uh, these look like they're weekly ABC structures on the way up. And um, the XAU right now is up a buck 40. You can see that that had already launched. That consolidation last looks like last Wednesday. Okay. Yeah. Uh, which is, you know, if you're in those markets, it's really good when the equities are ahead of the metal. And in this particular case, 170. You can see it. We launched it. And if you put these on weeklies, you're going to see that it's, it's pretty clean. You know, we'll see whether. Let's see. I got to get you volume on this. Yeah. Here we go. So what you're going to see if this is an ABC up, you know, your your B point is 180. That was the high of uh, February 22nd, the week of February 22nd. Your A point is down here at 150. And then, you know, your C is 161, which gets you about a 191. And you can see, you know, we pushed with good volume two weeks ago. Last week was small, but if that blows away the uh, 205 million at the uh, 180 price, you get, you get action. Okay. You know, that's what it looks like we're going to have. So, and that, the way that's set up, which is pretty cool. I suspect we're still going to be dealing with this Brexit for two weeks. <laughs> I would agree, you know, if not longer. Right. You know, <laughs> so that's going to be, uh, and we get a question about the GDX, and so the GDX would be doing the same thing. The GDX right now, I think I'll put this on a weekly too, because this is probably set up as an ABC also, potential ABC. Okay, so yeah, it is. So your, your B point on this is what, 2370. Your A is... Uh, 2022. So, well, what's that? 350. 250. 350. Okay, 350. good. 350 gets you uh, what? Uh, Almost 25. 2490 to me. 2490. Now, that's pretty cool, man. There you go. You know, because that gets you up into the highs of uh, January of 2018. You put this on. Yeah, that's, that's still going to be in a consolidation, but that's that's. Because it was, what did you say, 25, right? 2490, yep, 25. Yeah, so yeah. that gets you to the top of the consolidation. Yeah. And we still haven't launched it yet, but that's that consolidation has been going on since, uh, was that 2013, right? It sure has. Yeah, that's, it's, a, it's a, technically it's a nice setup. Uh, and we'll see what kind of acceleration you get. And the acceleration, of course, is we have the yen going with us right now. It's still not going with us. Uh, it's trying to, is, the, is that pound and that euro. Dow Industrials right now trading down 66. You get the Nasdaq off 42. S&P's down 13. Gold's up 990. You get silver up 15 cents. Notes and bonds, folks. Bottom line, higher price, lower yield. Tommy and I come right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com 
and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow right now is down 60. You get the Nasdaq off uh, 40. You get the S&Ps off 12 and a half. And we're gonna have we're gonna have action out here actually in another hour, right? Hour yeah, and a half yeah. uh, coming from the other side of the Atlantic. So they are four hours ahead of us. Yes. So to do the math, as you see all these numbers, uh, as in May to make a statement to Parliament on Brexit at 3:30, that's going to be 11:30 a.m. our time okay. um, as that comes out. But Theresa May is inclined to put her Brexit deal to a third vote in Parliament on Tuesday, according to people familiar with the matter. The EU said it's now prepared to handle the impact of the UK leaving without an agreement. Um, still negotiating, man. Put that out there, right? In oh, terms yeah. of why wouldn't the EU say that? So Theresa May told cabinet ministers she's inclined to put her Brexit deal to a vote in Parliament for a third time on Tuesday. No final decision has been taken, and the Prime Minister is planning further conversations with Conservatives before deciding on that. Uh, cabinet ministers also expect... Tory Oliver Letwin's amendment, giving the House of Commons control over next steps in Brexit process to pass a vote in Parliament today. That's going to be a big thing. Ministers did not discuss the schedule for May's reg resignation as Prime Minister. Because so that, much going on. Okay, yeah, because that one's saying that they're going to they want to take the process away from May, and Parliament yes. wants to do it. Yes, right. That'd and that—that that is what they're going to vote. So here's that. That's what I already knew. That was what yeah. kind of already planned. The House of Commons votes tonight on next steps for Brexit, including an attempt for Parliament to seize control of proceedings. Um, yeah. So that news in terms of Tuesday coming out at 10:15 our time. So just kind of breaking this hour and. Uh, I mean, you have other people saying no chance of a deal being approved. Um, just rhetoric back and forth, oh, right? I each know. side, each side, kind of playing the public and trying to get them on it, their side. Uh, it almost seems like a, a hard Brexit is possible again. It's like pretty amazing. Right? Yeah, I, I would. I, anything's possible for sure. Yeah. The way this is played out, but even you have here, you know, asked how the events could play out. Let's see who the what official they're talking about. So a Democratic Unionist Party official again. They, everybody's got a bias here, you know. Oh, of yeah. course they. So there's there's a. Um, the official said there's a chance of a no-deal Brexit, and that given multiple fractions in Parliament, it was unlikely politicians would agree on a single way forward. That's what we've seen countless times, right? Right. Um, nobody has a plan that everybody wants. Everybody just doesn't want the plan up there. Go ahead. Where you're... Yeah, and the European Union shifted its tone on a potential no-deal Brexit, reassuring businesses and citizens across the bloc that is now ready for the consequences of a UK leaving without an agreement. <laughs> And that's negotiating too. I was I just, you know, I mean, basically, no no, no. basically, yeah. what that says is we're willing, we're willing to walk away from the table. Right. Any negotiator should right. put that out there, right? Yeah. So that's that's that's. Well, what's let's, now let, let's read this one because this is what it's all about. So yes. The UK and Ireland will have to take unilateral steps to avoid a hard border in the event of a No Deal Brexit. A UF, UA, uh, European yeah. Union official said, adding that the European Commission is intensive talks with Irish authorities on the issue. The bloc doesn't want to see visible controls of infrastructure at the border, the official said, but it wasn't 
able to explicitly rule that out. I don't know how you're a different country and you don't have a border at you know when you're right there. Yeah. Um, so that's what they're dealing with, and that's where nobody really talked to Kevin Hinks. He says nobody really has a plan. And I say I, I know yeah. that's the problem, um, and that's why they've been at such a standstill. Man. Yeah. So they got seven amendments, it looks like. They'll be voting on some of that, one of them being whether the parliament's going to try and take away some control from the prime minister. And this is all going to start, what, in another hour, right? Yeah, yeah. I believe. An hour uh, and 15 minutes, because it's, yeah. Well, yes, May may make a statement. So May okay. to make a statement to parliament on Brexit at 3.30, which is 11.30 our time, 45 okay. minutes. Okay. Um, but as we can see, I mean, this is just kind of a live feed of what's going on, and we're getting updates, man, you know, 2.15, 12 o'clock, yeah. um, and it might escalate when she starts making oh, yeah. her announcements. Let's, so let's bring up that pound. So the, the pound out here. Nope, that's not the pound. <laughs> that's canopy growth. That's that canopy was quite a growth. shift. Yeah, totally. So we're at 132. Let's peek in its head up. One more time. Uh, we're peek in head slightly. The euro. We're on the pound again. One more. Yeah, peaking his head up a little too. Not much. Not you know. No. They're, they're both positive, but nothing really heavy. But I suspect once she starts talking, <laughs> and what will happen, folks, is that it's so early. Uh, market time. Uh, you know, 10:47. We yeah. are, you can expect high volatility inside these currencies, man. Sure. And, the, and the currencies right now are definitely running the metals market. That's for sure. Uh, we'll see, uh, you know, when, when I, yeah, what, what a toss-up, man. Let's go into Apple and see what they're saying on the news front ahead of that. Yeah, because this is their big day. I mean, this is, yes. they're going to start the whole deal today, right? So yeah. Apple's reinvention as a services company starts for real today. So Apple boss Tim Cook takes the stage at the Steve Jobs Theater in Silicon Valley today. He'll usher in a new ERA, the world's largest technology company, the chief executive officer, expected to unveil streaming video and yep. new subscriptions, key part of Apple's push to transform into a leading digital service provider. Uh, they may even discuss a monthly video game subscription, uh, likely absent from the event any new versions of gadgets. So they're just talking about services in there, no new iPhones, no new iPads. They already really just announced all those last couple right. Of weeks, right, in terms of a new iPad, new... Uh, so let's see, for Cook, taken over after Jobs, who had passed away in 2011, um, the current CEO is an expert in hardware supply chains who spent years wrangling eager component manufacturers in Asia to assemble the company's blockbuster iPhone. Uh, this is a p pivotal shift for Apple, in our opinion, um, and the biggest strategic move since the iPhone was unveiled in 2007. And I would, I would agree, only in that they just came out and told everybody, we're not even going to tell you how many iPhones we sell anymore. <laughs> so that better be a shift um, yeah. of pretty epic proportions. Yeah. So and It's a totally different business. Yes, right. I you mean, know, they're, they're I mean they have the hardware Amazon. in the hand. But I mean, I'm excuse me, Netflix is in there. Right. That's a completely... You know, you, ha you have the hardware in the hand, but like, okay, what's going to make you go there? Just like, listen, everyone has the hardware in the hand. What makes you go to TFNN? Well... Yeah. I mean, that's, yep. that's what you're talking. you you gotta, you got to change Definitely. people's deals and say, okay, hit that button. So they're yeah. really trying to create an aura around this. The venue that it's in, um, the Steve Jobs Theater, only used twice in the two years that it has um, been available. And really? one of those for the iPhone X, the uh -huh. X, which I do remember because I watched some of that because it was just going to be such a big deal. Okay. So they're really putting it in their you know, main, main area, oh, their yeah. main launch um, arena. Um, the second time it launched the iPhone XS and latest Apple Watch. So um, it, they're treating it like a big launch, as, as you would expect in, in the hype it's getting. So, so it's 7.50 in the morning right now there, so I wonder what time it starts. Yeah, 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 I know. They didn't even mention uh, it. I'm sure we could figure it out. But unlike the iPhone 2007, which broke new ground, Apple's video service faces stiff competition from well-established players. Netflix, Amazon, Disney, Hulu, yep. AT&T are investing at least 20 billion combined each year on content and Apple is spending about a billion dollars this nothing. year right that's the exactly um, it, you know um, oh according to Ives okay uh, and that is Ives he was um, beats by Dre who's I uh, they must say his first um, yeah, the executive I, you know what I'm talking about I, I think Ives is um, he, an analyst oh really okay I think so yeah it could yeah. be
Either way, we get the deal. You know, you're gonna compete with with the likes of Netflix on content, man. And one billion to twenty, right? You need a lot more than that, man. It's it's quite a venture. They're they're kicking off. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. We have the Dow Industrials. Just oh, went positive. What uh, happened? Up nine. Nasdaq uh, is uh, down 16. S&P's oh. off five and a half. Coming right back. Oh boy. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. No matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. Whether you just plan on diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his Gold Report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics, including gold, silver, platinum, copper, the XAU and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining equities. Start your 2018 off with a bang and sign up for The Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find The Gold Report under Investment Newsletters. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow Industrials right now up 37. We get the NASDAQ uh, down 10. S&Ps are off three, and that was uh, quite a bump up. What's uh, going on in the market, man? They just zapped our computer screen. Yeah. Gotta love the beauty of technology. We got what's going on in the market right, right in the front phone. of us on How's mobile, that? man. Know, you, you gotta, gotta love it. it. You gotta love it. Um, yeah, so we'll see on, you know, in terms of Apple, Netflix. Uh, that's where you really start getting into, you know, your brand awareness, right? So everybody loves Netflix in terms of from a consumer right. standpoint. Right. Um, are you willing to make that change and then start watching original content produced by Apple? I'm not sure. And how much is it going to cost? Yeah, that for we, sure. We, we, right. You know, the cost equation is in there for sure. It, there's um, just so many shows already on Netflix, right? Right. Like, so I have Amazon Prime. I right. really haven't watched that many shows on Prime yet. I probably will. They're sitting there for me whenever I want right. them. But that's just the nature of how things go, right? It you is. know, I'm not like, it's not like where you pull up multiple apps and you peruse like you do on cable. No, you don't. I go into Netflix and I peruse. Maybe right. I'll go into Prime. Right. How are you going to transition somebody to start trying new shows on Apple? It's a real battle, man. I don't know how they're going to do that. Um, well, and also, the, I guess 
the people that don't have an Apple. Like, I don't have an Apple phone. Sure. Is that, that that's, and I'm always on Netflix if I'm watching TV, and I don't go on Prime. And Amazon, I was reading a couple of stories that they're trying to figure out how to get us all on Prime. Yeah. Because they feel like I already got a good deal. So, you know right. what I mean? It just, it would, Netflix, right. I, just, I just haven't done it yet. I, I'm it the same to. way. Do you know what I mean? And that's, that's the barrier that they're going to have to get over with other people. Whether you're on, and I'm not even sure how it's going to work. I'd like a great point. Apple, Android, right. how does that work? So right. are you competing for a smaller share? Right. I don't know. And, it wouldn't and, make sense, but maybe, you know, yeah. And that goes back to subscription again. What's it going to cost? Right. You know, what, what do we pay for Prime? Is it 100 bucks now per year or it's something? Probably somewhere around yeah. there, yeah. So that, that, I feel that's great. Right. I know I pay $11.15 for yeah. Netflix. Right. That's what I can say. They're both around 100 bucks a that, year or something. That's two cups of coffee at Starbucks where right. I get a venti black eye. Yeah. Or 10 something. Compared to cable TV right oh, now with it. running you 180 bucks, 200 yeah. bucks a month. Now that combines in internet, which you're going to have to keep, but nonetheless, yeah. Stay right there, folks. Fast Market coming up next. Thanks, Bill. Thanks, man.